Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Sidome at Home. Uh, my name is Suki, and I will be leading Sidome at Home tonight. Um, I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes. I think that we have a few more participants that are supposed to join us. So stand by, and we'll get started in just a minute. Um, as a reminder, if you're new to Sidome at Home, I recommend that you turn the brightness up on your screen if you're using a computer. We tend to have our brightness down, you know, because we're staring at screens all day. Um, but for this particular program, I recommend that you turn the brightness up. You'll be able to see it a little better. All right, stand by and we'll get started here in just a couple minutes. All right. Hello again, um, everybody. Welcome to Sidome at Home. Uh, my name is Suki, and I will be spending the next 30 minutes or so with you tonight. Um, if you are new to Zoom or to webinar with Zoom, there are a couple of things to know. Uh, there's a chat box and a Q&A box that um, feel free to type up questions. I will most certainly leave time at the end of the program to answer questions. If I see them, I will um, try to answer them during the presentation if I can, but that doesn't always work out. But let's go ahead and get started. So just in case you were wondering where you are in the universe, you're right there. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be talking about the Milky Way, which is the galaxy that our little solar system resides in. Um, we'll also spend a little time back on planet Earth to looking at our night sky, but, um, but we'll chat about the Milky Way a little bit too. So I like this image because our little solar system, and it's kind of on the sort of middle outside third edge of our Milky Way galaxy. And that little circle does a pretty good job of showing you what we can see in our night sky. The majority of the stars that we see in our night sky are really that close to us. They're just a little part of the Milky Way. And in this image, you can see that depending on where we are in the year, where the Earth is orbiting around the sun, depends on how well we can see the Milky Way from Earth. Uh, December through January, the sun is between us and the middle of the Milky Way, so we can't see it so well. And even though right now we're in March, which is officially coming around the bend, you still can't see the Milky Way very well from Earth right now. It's much easier to see in the summertime. And we'll touch on that again when we land on Earth later on in the program. 
but let's talk about the Milky Way for just a little bit. So the Milky Way galaxy is a spiral galaxy, which is a pretty common type galaxy. You can see that there are several arms in our galaxy. The sun with our little solar system is located up here, part of the Orion arm. And the sun rotates and the Milky Way is rotating and our sun rotates within the Milky Way about every 200 million years. You can also see that there is a black hole in the middle of our galaxy, which is also common. I believe most large galaxies have a black hole in the center of them from what I understand. Now you can think of the Milky Way as looking like um, a dinner plate or a Frisbee. So it's very thin, um, but round. So it's about 100,000 light years across, but only about 10,000 light years thick. And when we're standing on Earth and we can see the Milky Way, Think about that you're looking across that thin part of the Milky Way. Now, it's hard to imagine this, but there are about a hundred, there's over actually over a hundred billion stars, and that's billion with a B stars in the Milky Way. So, our sun the center of our little solar system is a star, just like the stars that you see at night. And now imagine that there's a hundred billion, over a hundred billion other stars in just our little galaxy. Um, size and scale is kind of hard to wrap your brain around. Um, the universe is so large, but let's take a look at this next slide is a little uh, video from NASA that I think puts some size and scale in proportion. I think NASA does such a great job with um, explaining things like that. I absolutely love their website for um, come finding answers to questions. So hopefully that put it a little bit in perspective 
uh, the sun, when it shines light, it takes eight minutes for it to get to earth and talking about a light year and how far that is. So it's a hundred, um, hundred thousand light years to go all the way across the Milky Way. But now I'm gonna really blow your mind because let's talk about scale, but scaling way out. So this is an image from the Hubble telescope. It's an ultra deep field image. This took many years. This isn't a snapshot. This is many images over, um, over several years um, that were composited together. This image is of 10,000 galaxies. So every single speck that you can see in this image is another galaxy. But I want you to know that the field of view that Hubble took this image in is equivalent of you standing on Earth holding a grain of rice in your hand and holding it at arm's length and holding that up to the night sky. So you can imagine how tiny that little grain of rice is up in the night sky. That's where this image came from. So that's 10,000 galaxies in just this small space from where we can see. So it's believed that there are over 100 billion other galaxies. Um, so uh, over 100 billion stars in our Milky Way, and then over 100 billion other galaxies. It can be kind of hard to wrap your mind around. But now let's switch gears a little bit, and we'll try to bring it back down to our solar system level. And because it's March Madness, I figure let's we can do a basketball court analogy. So here's the standard high school basketball court, which I think we're all probably very familiar with. Um, and for size and scale, I want you to think about our sun being the size of a basketball. So if our sun is the size of a basketball, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are the four inner planets in our solar system. And if the sun is the size of a basketball, Mercury is the size of a seed bead. I hope you know what I mean by a seed bead, a very tiny, tiny little bead that you might find on a bracelet or a necklace, but a really small one. Um, Venus and Earth are a little bit bigger than that. They're just a small, imagine a small stone bead. So that's how tiny our planets are compared to our sun. And if you stand, if you have some friends and you stand with a basketball on the far side of the court, Mercury, that little Mercury size of a seed bead, your friend would have to stand at the three point line, just a little past it actually. That's how far away Mercury is from the sun. And then Venus, your friend that's holding Venus, that's just the size of a small bead, is at the other three point line. And then your next friend that's holding Earth, which is also just a little bead, is as far as you can go on the other side of the court. And Mars is still another 40 feet away in this scale. So even our solar system, which is small in comparison to the Milky Way and certainly the universe, it's still enormous. It takes, it's so much space. So a basketball sun here, little tiny seed bead of Mercury here, a small bead of Venus here, small bead of Earth here, and, and Mars is not even on the court. And then if you want Jupiter or Saturn, you're clear out in the parking lot. They're really, really far away. 
Um, the other fun thing to think about is that our closest star to us at this scale would be the equivalent of being over in Europe. So if any of you have ever hopped on an airplane and flown eight hours over to London or Dublin, that's how far away our nearest star is. Proxima Centauri is four light years away, which is that far. And then at this scale, if you wanna think about how big the Milky Way is, the Milky Way is an additional, like to get to the other side of the Milky Way is an additional 67 million miles. So that's even past Mars. Uh, Mars is about 40 million miles away from Earth. So I don't know if that scale helps or not, <laughs> but hopefully you can kind of put it in perspective a little bit. All right, now that I have maybe blown your mind a little bit, how about if we land back on planet Earth and let's see what's up in the night sky. Um, if you are new to Cytome at home, I'm gonna give you a little refresher on uh, what we're looking at. This is our planet, planetaries, planetarium software um, that we use in the Cytome if you come to the works, um, but on a flat screen, it looks a little different. So just to let you know what you're looking at, this is a fisheye view. So we're going all the way from the east, southeast, south. You can see the cardinal directions are here on the horizon, southwest, all the way over to the west. And obviously this is the horizon line, but I also want you to think about that you're looking all the way up to the like if you were standing on the ground, you would have your head cranked back just as far as you could to look all the way up. So you're looking at a fish eye view. And this is today's date and today's time. So I'm gonna run time forward a little bit so that we can see some stars in tonight's sky. Although I think it's pretty rainy out there, so I'm not really sure uh, if we'll get to see any stars tonight. And I'll stop time at about nine o'clock at night. So earlier I had mentioned uh, that the Milky Way isn't so easy to see right now from Earth. Um, I have the Milky Way turned up as bright as it can be. And you can see when you look here, you can see this sort of, that's why it's called the Milky Way, almost looks like a cloud, this sort of milky mist across the sky. So this time of year, the Milky Way is not very bright. Uh, when you start getting into July, um, you can see it a little bit better. Look south and look overhead. Um, I will say in central Ohio, unfortunately, we have a lot of light pollution here. So even I live out in the country and I have a hard time seeing the Milky Way. Um, the best way that I've ever seen the Milky Way is uh, when I've been out west in the mountains or when I've been in the mountains of Virginia or North Carolina. I've gotten some nice views of the Milky Way when I've been somewhere very remote. So um, especially in the summertime, look south and look overhead and see if you can, on a beautiful clear night, it might sort of look like a misty cloud stripe that's going across the sky, and that's the Milky Way. And remember that you're looking across the sort of thin part of the Milky Way towards the center 
of the Milky Way when you're looking at it in the summertime. All right. So let's shift gears and talk a little bit about what else we can see in our night sky tonight. Um, it's one of my favorite times of year because there's a couple of spring constellations that are up, but the winter constellations are still up and those are some of my favorite. Um, also though, right now, Mars is up. So you can see there's a little tiny sliver of a moon over here. And here's Mars. And I'll point out some other things too. But remember, um, NASA just landed a rover one month ago, actually. Um, Perseverance just landed on Mars. So whenever you look up at Mars, remember that it's over 40 million miles away. It takes us seven months to get there. And we have um, a couple of different robots on Mars. Uh, three, I think, are still, are still working. And Perseverance is a new one. And Perseverance has a little helicopter ingenuity that um, I think is supposed to take its first flight in April. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, but anyway, getting back to some of the constellations that you can see. So when you look south, the very brightest thing you'll see is this star, Sirius. And it is so bright. Um, in fact, the sky doesn't even have to be completely dark in order for you to see Sirius. Um, besides the moon, Sirius is the brightest thing in our night sky. So look for Sirius. And it is the nose of Canis Major. Oh, hold on. Let me turn on the let me turn on the illustrations so you can see the dog Canis Major. And you actually can see these other stars that are part of Canis Major, but boy, Sirius is easy to find. Now, the next easiest thing I think to find in the winter sky is Orion. So Orion the hunter, his belt is very easy to spot. Those three stars right in a row. And um, I find that this flat screen just does not do it justice. Orion is a huge constellation in your backyard winter sky. So I'm gonna turn Orion off for just a second. So we can look at Orion's belt, these three stars right here. This star shines red. That's Betelgeuse. So Betelgeuse is really easy to find. The Rigel, Rigel's also quite bright. The sword of Orion, where the Orion Nebula is. If you have a really nice clear night and you're looking at Orion and looking at his sword, if it looks like there's kind of a misty cloud in there, that's the Orion Nebula. Then use Orion's belt and it points you to this V in the sky. And even if you can't see the V from your backyard, this red star, Aldebaran, is quite bright. And that's Taurus the bull. So you will be able to find at least the eye of the bull, the star Aldebaran in the night sky, and it shines red. And I point out these red stars because Betelgeuse, Aldebaran shine red. And then remember, here's little Mars right now. Mars doesn't stay there forever. Mars moves much faster than the, um, moves faster than the other stars. But right now it's easy to find Mars because it's right here by Taurus, but it also shines red. 
So see if you can notice these two red stars and then our little red planet. And just past that, this beautiful little sliver of a moon, but also Pleiades or the seven sisters. This little cluster of stars is the seven sisters. And I find that uh, I have an easier time seeing Pleiades when I'm not looking directly at it. I'll look at Taurus and I can see Pleiades out of the corner of my eye. It's a, a misty little cluster of stars. So again, find Orion and it points you to Taurus, Mars, Pleiades, and you can go the other way and find Sirius, the star Sirius, which is not hard to do. Now I like to point out another constellation. It's not actually that easy to see, but do know that Orion's hunting dog, Canis Major, is chasing a bunny rabbit through the night sky. So Lepus, the bunny, is up there too. Now I had mentioned that there are some spring constellations up as well. Use Orion again to find the first one that I wanna mention. Use his front foot, Rigel, and Betelgeuse, that red star. And that points you the twin stars of Gemini. And maybe you can see the sort of legs of Gemini and maybe you can't, but you will definitely be able to find those twin stars when you look, uh, when you use Orion. Now also in the spring sky, notice this backwards question mark and it really does stand out in your night sky, and that is Leo the lion. So those are some really easy um, Orion, Gemini, Leo, and Taurus are particularly easy to see in the southern sky in this kind of late spring. Now I'm gonna rotate the dome around and let's look north for just a minute. Now, when you look north, the very, very easiest thing to find in the north sky is the Big Dipper. And then you can use the Big Dipper and it points you to the North Star Polaris. Now Polaris is not a bright star, not like Sirius. Polaris is, um, is rather dim, but the Big Dipper is happy to point you to, um, to that star. And then if you go on the other side, Cassiopeia is another constellation that's easy to find. And it looks sort of like a squished M or a squished W in the night sky. And you should be able to find it without any trouble at all. Now, hold on one second. I thought I had, um, I thought I had set aside another constellation. So give me one second to pull it up because we have another constellation Andromeda 
that's just past Cassiopeia. But what I wanted to actually point out is that our closest next galaxy, because we are talking about the Milky Way tonight, our closest next galaxy, and by closest, I mean it is um, 2.5 million light years away. So in universe terms, that's close. But Andromeda galaxy is right here next to the constellation Andromeda. So let me, I'm gonna turn off the illustrations for just a second and I'm gonna turn off the names so that Again, you can see the Big Dipper points you to Polaris, points you to this squished M, which is Cassiopeia, and then keep going and you can see the constellation Andromeda. And if you look on a really clear night, look for the Andromeda galaxy. It's the very farthest object that we can see with the naked eye in our night sky. And again, it's 2.5 million light years away. And it's a whole other galaxy. Andromeda galaxy is actually very similar to um, the Milky Way. But I wanted to point out where it is in the night sky. Now, let me show you really quickly why the North Star is called the North Star. So our Earth is tilted on its axis and our North Pole is pointed directly at Polaris. Polaris just happens to be directly in line with our North Pole. Um, the South Pole of Earth, by the way, does not have a star like we have um, Polaris or the North Star. But I'll turn on Ursa Major and Ursa Minor so you can see the Big Dipper is actually part of Ursa Major. Ursa is Latin for bear, major is great or big. So this is the great bear. See the Big Dipper is the rump in the tail. And then her baby, Ursa Minor, or the little bear, the tip of the tail is Polaris. Sometimes Ursa Minor is called the little dipper as well. Um, I will say though, it, it's very difficult to actually see the little dipper, but once you've found Polaris, you can kind of try to look for it. Um, but I'm going to run time forward just overnight. And see how Polaris stays still. And it looks like all the other stars are moving. Remember, it's not the stars that are moving, it's the Earth that's rotating on its axis. And Polaris is in the middle of that because our North Pole is pointed right at it. And I'll stop time there. This is about 11.30 at night. And just for fun, I'll go ahead and turn on all of the constellations that are up in the sky. And we can take a quick look. And we can't see all of the constellations all of the time. Um, as the Earth orbits around the sun, uh, we see different parts of the Milky Way, as I talked about earlier. So that's why I was mentioning spring and winter and summer constellations. Now the night, the north sky is always similar, but the south sky changes quite a bit. And I'll rotate around so you can see the constellations in the south. And we had talked about Taurus. There are 
88 constellations. And they're almost all named after Roman and Greek mythology. But that is about all I have for you for tonight's show. I hope that um, I hope that that was fun. I'm trying to, I minimized um, the question and answer screen on my, so I have chat up if anybody has any questions at all. Feel free to put them into the question and answer section or the chat section, and I will certainly try to answer them for you. No questions from anybody tonight? All right. Well, um, thank you so much for coming to SciDome at Home. Um, please look on our website. The works is open. Um, we do have limited hours and you do have to sign up ahead of time. Um, so make sure to get on our website. And if you want to buy tickets ahead of time, please do. Um, we have lots of programs going on, both virtual and in person. So please feel free to look at our website and um, some exciting stuff coming up at the works. So hope to see you there soon. Thanks so much, everybody.